about different things and the different communications that are coming out and being made available. Uh, today, there's a, the governor will be speaking at 12 o'clock. And I think that's gonna be important for all of us to, for me at least, and for all of us to understand where the governor's uh, giving us guidance and direction. Uh, yesterday, the president spoke uh, and that, that gave the, the direction, I think, to the different states and what they may or may not be able to do. So I think, you know, again, we're just keeping up as things uh, come, come to us and they're coming to us really fast sometimes. Sometimes we get things in the morning and then in the, af in the afternoon, we get something different or we get some different kind of guidance. Uh, but we continue to look at those. We continue to get the guidance from the Centers for the, the Disease Control and Prevention, the CDC. Uh, we continue getting updates from our, our, our regional and our local uh, um, uh, health professionals. And uh, as a matter of fact, I'm meeting this afternoon at two o'clock with a Zoom meeting with the Kaufman County judge. And we've been meeting every week with Kaufman County. The same thing is true with Henderson County. And so it's just a regular, regular type of, uh, of a communication. I've been meeting twice a week with the presidents of all the co community colleges in Texas. Uh, at first we were meeting every other day, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, but now we're only meeting on Wednesdays and Fridays. So there's a lot of communication. A lot of people are trying to figure this out just like we are. And uh, you know, people are doing things differently. Uh, but they're still, you know, they're trying to do what we can to serve our students and do the best job that we pa possibly can. And again, we're listening to uh, Dr. Reed, Helen Reed and her staff. They, they are our go-to people. When we have questions about health or questions about what we should do or what we shouldn't do, we always communicate with her. She's, she's an expert and her people are experts in the health area. So they, they're, they've been able to help us a whole lot. Dr. I, uh, Ruth Iverson as well. Again, let me emphasize, uh, and I've said this from the very beginning, I guess probably starting about six weeks ago, that the health and the wellness of our students and our faculty and our staff are utmost important to us. And we, as we continue to plan, as we continue on a day-by-day -day, uh, uh, situation, uh, no matter what those circumstances are, for the remainder of the spring semester or beyond, uh, the health and safety of our, of our faculty, of our staff, of our students are all what we're what we're we're looking at as being the, the utmost important to us. Let me also say that on behalf of the board of trustees, uh, I think I can speak for them and myself. I, let me express our appreciation uh, to each of you for your patience and your flexibility that you've uh, that you've uh, exhibited over the last six weeks uh, during this challenging time. Uh, we've been making decisions, as I've said earlier, on a sometimes an hourly basis, and sometimes they're not easy decisions to make, and sometimes when we make a decision, we have to change it the next day. So thank you for your patience, because it's not just a, a straightforward thing that we can make a decision, and that's the way it is for the remainder of the semester or for the remainder of the school year, because things change rapidly. Uh, I'm very, very proud of each one of you, faculty, staff, and our students, for the commitment that you have and the dedication that you have to our college and to our students. Uh, I will personally, and I think our board of trustees will as also be forever grateful for, the, for what you've done in the last six weeks. Uh, as I mentioned at several occasions, and I'll keep mentioning this over and over again, uh, you are our heroes. You are the people who have been able to make the changes and get things done so that we could continue this semester, this spring semester, and that we could continue doing the things that we do for our students and our community. And that, that will be something that I will personally be forever grateful uh, to you for, uh, and, and uh, so will our students. And many of you have sacrificed, I know many of you are sacrificing right now, and uh, your worlds have been turned upside down as well as, as everyone else. And, and I, know, I know that it hasn't been easy. Uh, I know there's challenges still ahead of us, but I also know that you are willing and you are able to make those challenges and meet those challenges. And again, I appreciate that very much. I have learned a lot in the last six weeks. I have made decisions that, uh, in my wildest dreams. Uh, I've been here for over 45 years at the college and I never dreamed that these kind of decisions would be made here, uh, but they are. And, and again, you have been the ones that have implemented those decisions and made them work for us. Many of you are working, uh, many of our staff are working remotely. You've made that work for us. 
uh, all of our faculty are, are basically working remotely and you've made that work for us. I even had a faculty member that um, told me a couple of years ago that they would never teach an online class. Well, here we are. Uh, and, and, and you know what, I think that, uh, that there actually some of those faculty that said they'd never teach an online class, maybe even enjoying it. So a little bit. So, and, and they're learning as well. And, and I appreciate all of that, uh, all of that. And working home, I know that we have, uh, we have, we have uh, staff members at the college that are working harder at home than they would be working if they were here. And uh, working longer hours at home than they would be if they were here. And doing more probably at home. And some of you are, are doing that at home with two or three kids uh, at home with you because they're home from school because the school's out. And uh, so, you know, it's been a challenge for everybody, but we're working our way through it. And I appreciate that. Appreciate that very much. Um, let me go ahead then and talk about some of the questions that have been given to me. And then some of the questions that I thought you might be interested in knowing a little bit about. Um, and, and then kind of going forward. And some of this you've, we've already talked about before. Some of it you already know, but again, maybe you don't. And we're going to talk about it a little bit more. Um, as you know, we've been basically, we will be closed. The college will be closed. Our doors will be closed until May 4th. Uh, that's, that's basically mandated by Governor Abbott uh, back several weeks ago. Um, the, the, uh, we're waiting for a guidance to see what will, when we'll open those doors and what we'll do. We don't know that. Um, I, I suspect that uh, we'll get some guidance today from the governor in terms of what we may or may not be able to do. But then again, I think that we'll get even further guidance from our local uh, uh, county judges and our local mayors and our local, local uh, entities in terms of what we can and what we should be doing. We will not open if it, if it, if it, if I believe or we believe at all that it's still not safe. Uh, it will not be. It will be. It will be uh, not open until we're certainly sure that everything is okay and we can do the things that we need to do and be safe. So that's again our priority. But that decision will not be made until later on. I wish I could tell you today that we're not going to be open or that we are, but I don't know, and and I won't know probably for a couple of more weeks would be my best guess. I will tell you though that all the student services that we uh, are, are, are doing, um, we're doing remotely and I think we're doing a very good job of that. We had registration uh, that started for our summer semester last, uh, this last Monday and I think it's going very well. I've talked to Janet Green, I've talked to all of our, our other campuses and things are going well with registration. It's not the same because they're not coming in and talking to us in person, but it's working and, I, and we're making it work and I appreciate that very much. Um, all the other student services, the financial aid side of it, the, uh, the registrar side of it, the admission side of it, all of those seem to be working well. So even though we're closed, the doors are closed, students can't come in, no one can come into our campus except for us, uh, those designated that, that are coming in. Uh, then uh, we're still functioning and we're still doing what we need to do for the summer semester and we'll start the spring semester, uh, I, I think in a couple of weeks on April the 27th. There were, uh, as you all know, we, we basically converted all of our um, uh, academic classes to online and I think that's working very well. I've had pretty much a weekly meeting or and, and even more than that with our instructional um, um, leadership and basically they're telling me that it seems to be working very well. I, I haven't heard that many negatives from students or from parents or from uh, professors or from anyone. So I think it must be working pretty well. And again, I appreciate you helping that, that, that to work. Um, and we'll just keep on going with that and, and, and until the end of the semester and then we'll see what we need to do um, for the summer. I'm gonna talk about that in just a few minutes. There were a couple of classes that we did not convert to, to, to uh, online, primarily because we just didn't feel like that we could. Those were the automotive and auto, uh, automotive technology and welding classes. And we, we plan on uh, having those classes back, hopefully face-to-face -face in the first six weeks of the summer so that we can, uh, we can go ahead and have those classes uh, and those students finish those classes out this summer. Um, in terms of, I've had a question about graduation ceremony. 
we, we, we have postponed graduation ceremony that was scheduled for May 14th for our, our uh, health science uh, graduates, and then May 15th for our other graduates, AA and AAS graduates and certificate graduates. And uh, that has been postponed uh, as of now until uh, our August graduation, end of summer graduation, which is scheduled for Friday, August the 14th. I hope that does not change between now and then. My, my, my thoughts are that is that by then we'll be okay to have a graduation ceremony, but that's our plans now. Uh, well, I have talked to Dr. Reed about possibly having a separate, which is, it is separate anyways, uh, health science graduation ceremony, maybe earlier than that. It could be that we could have that in June or July. All, obviously, again, that depends on the circumstances and what we can do and what we can't do. Uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the diplomas can be, uh, uh, can be uh, uh, obtained by the graduates after the, after the uh, end of the, our, our uh, semester, and we'll be able to get them the diplomas, and we'll be able to do all the things that we would normally do at graduation. We just won't be able to have a ceremony. And so I wanted to mention that to you as well. And we'll, we'll, we'll kind of play it by ear and see what happens as, a, as time goes along regarding the, the May graduation. But right now we're hoping to have that at Athens High School like we had had the, the May graduation in, in August. Um, and we may have it, uh, you know, we may have to have three or four different graduation ceremonies because obviously it'll be a big one if we have both the May graduates and the, uh, the August graduates. I've had question about summer school. Uh, what are, what are we what are we doing? What are we what are we planning on doing for summer school? Right now, our um, our plans are to continue having summer school just like we scheduled it. Uh, we have a few face to face classes. If you'll look on the schedule, there's not that many. Uh, I'd say probably 85 percent of our of our classes, academic type classes, are online for summer but we do have some face-to-face -face because students won't face-to-face. -face. And a lot of our students won't face-to-face. -face. So we're gonna continue uh, offering our schedule as we had planned until we are told that we can't. Uh, and we'll, again, we, we'll hopefully know something. I'm hoping in early May and plenty of time to be able to do something by the beginning of our, uh, of our campus uh, summer uh, classes which I believe start on maybe June, no, they start May the, the 25th or 6th or something like that. It's the end of, towards the end of May. So we're, we're planning to go as, as we have planned. It may end up by the first week in May, we may find out that we can't do what we have planned and that we may have to reevaluate what we're gonna do with those face-to-face uh, -face classes. I did notice that a lot of those face-to-face -face classes that we're offering in the summer, we're also offering online the same class online as well as face to face. So, you know, we'll just have to evaluate what we're gonna do with that as well as what we're gonna do with those uh, workforce classes that I mentioned earlier, if we can't have the summer, the first six weeks of the summer as we had hoped to do. Um, and again, e even if we do, uh, even if we do uh, have the, the summer schedule, um, if we find out in mid-May or early May that we've still got the, uh, the, the six-foot guidelines and the 10-person guidelines, then we'll probably have to convert everything to online because we just can't do that. And I'm not comfortable with having students coming on campus uh, in that kind of environment. So we'll just have to wait and see. Uh, I, I don't like necessarily waiting, but I don't, have, well, I don't think we have much of a choice. I will mention TDCJ. I noticed we do have some people from TDCJ on the line here. Uh, that is another another whole scenario that we're having to work through. Um, it looks like we're probably going to have to postpone the academic summer schedule um, a couple of weeks. Uh, Dr. Hurley and and uh, our AVPs are are going to be working on how we can make it work if we start the summer schedule on June 1st and have it be a 10-week schedule instead of a 12-week schedule. Um, they're, they're having lots of problems over at Beto One. I, I, I saw yesterday where they're transporting, there were like over 100 uh, 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 staff, guards, and our inmates that had been infected. And so at Beto One by itself. So I noticed yesterday they're transporting them to Huntsville. So things are changing out there as well. But right now, we're, we just don't know the summer schedule at TDCJ. We think, we think it's probably gonna be postponed because it takes us about three weeks to get ready for that. 
and we haven't started getting ready for it yet because we don't know when it's going to start. So there's, there's still some uncertainty regarding the academic summer schedule. There's even some possibility if we have to maintain the six foot rule and the 10 person rule. And I hate to say this because I don't want to be negative, but there's a possibility we could even have to, to, to even cancel the summer schedule for TDCJ if we can't make it work. We're looking at all sorts of alternatives. We're looking at meeting twice a week instead of once a week. We're looking at different things. So we don't want to do that. But that is something out there that's uh, other schools have already already done that. And so uh, we're looking at we're looking at all of our possibilities. This is account years. Most of you already know that for our funding for our next biennium. So anything that we do regarding that is hurting us. It's going to be hurting us if they continue doing the the account year uh, as they have done in the previous uh, previous years. And I think that they probably are looking at that as well in terms of our next biennium funding. So we don't want to do that. Also, the, the eight-week vocational workforce programs that we have at TDCJ, again, we're, we're, all, we're uh, having to wait and see what happens with that until they do away basically with the six-foot rule and the 10-person uh, rule we probably won't be able to go back into the units again and start teaching. Um, and what we're doing with that is we're just gonna postpone that uh, eight week, those eight week classes. And when we come back, we'll start off where we left off. And uh, we're, we're just moving the, the class schedules, the eight week schedules on down the road to later dates. So it's not, it's not an easy thing to do. It's not what, what we wanna do, but it's what we ha basically have to do and I will assure you that we're not going to have those classes out there until it's appropriate and we can feel safe and going in. Uh, another question I've had is this basically is coming from students. Uh, what if I don't have a computer or if I don't have Wi-Fi, what can we do? And again, um, we, we, we do have hotspots available on all of our campuses. Those hotspot locations are on our website. If a student wants to come up at night or on the weekend or whatever, or even during the day and use those hotspots, they're available. Uh, computers are, uh, and they could, we also have uh, a computer uh, lab open on each campus, one lab. It's very closely monitored. You have to have reservations. Uh, you need to have reservations to be able to go in, but it's, uh, it is possible for students to come in to, to a lab, uh, one lab on each campus, and, and, and uh, use our computer if that's, if that's absolutely necessary and needed uh, to be able to do. And again, that's by basically appointment only, and uh, we're trying to work uh, to make sure that's monitored very, very, very closely uh, and as we go through. Uh, I haven't had, honestly, that much, and maybe some of you have, but haven't had that much of an issue with students not being able to have Wi-Fi or computers as I thought we probably would six weeks ago but maybe I'm just underestimating, maybe it hasn't really hit yet. But I know that, uh, I know we're trying to do the best that we can to work with those students and help them in whatever way we possibly can without endangering the safety of them or ourselves. Um, I have students and I've had people, the faculty as well, uh, tell me that they've had students that have registered for face-to-face -face classes. They did not want to take an online class. They wanted to take a face-to-face, -face. that's why they registered for it, and now we've, we've converted them to an online, and, and they, don't, they don't want to do that. And I get that. I mean, I not understand we've got students out there that, for whatever reason, are not good at taking face-to-face -face classes. And uh, that's just, I mean, that's okay, I mean, but, but that, we don't have a choice right now. So what I've encouraged our faculty and our students to do is try to work things out with our students, try to help them, support them, and I know that Holly Collier is doing a great job of that, and our faculty and our, 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 our mentors are doing a great job of that. But uh, if it comes down to it and there's no other choice, then the student can drop the class, of course. That's, a, that's an alternative. But we would like also for them to consider, our faculty to consider giving them an incomplete. There are some possible ramifications for an incomplete. If they never complete the work, then they're gonna have uh, basically a zero on their transcript. So, you know, and we're putting together right now a, uh, a form for all of our faculty. To, I'm gonna send it out probably today or maybe Monday for our faculty and our students to be able to acknowledge that when they give an incomplete that they, the student understands that they have to complete the work. 
and uh, and that there's and, and and the faculty know that already, of course, but but that but there's kind of a little contract between the two, and I know signatures may be difficult to get, but at least I want those students to understand that there's they just when they get an eye there's there's more to it than just getting an eye. They got to finish it out, and it's our goal for these students to finish those classes this summer. If they can finish those classes this summer and get the work done, then there's absolutely no problem in terms of financial aid or anything else. If they wait until the fall semester and they don't do anything this summer, then there's no problem with financial aid. But if they don't complete those uh, classes, uh, those, those, those classes where they got an I, when they come back to take classes again, then that could be an issue. So, uh, you know, we don't want it to be, so we want them to come back this summer. We want them to get it done. And I realize that's extra work for faculty and I'm sorry, that's just the way it, you know, and, and you know, I'm, hopefully that's not gonna be too many students that will take an incomplete but that's just the way it is today with our, our world that we're living in. So um, I appreciate the fact I already know that we've had a lot of faculty working with students and trying to help them. And I, I was talking with one of our faculty members earlier this week about developmental classes. That's kind of a different scenario. If you don't, if you get an incomplete in a developmental class, that means you can't continue on and take some of the prerequisite, it's a prerequisite for some of the other courses later on, later on and you're not TSI complete. So it does present even more of a problem for those students in developmental classes. So I know you're gonna work with them as, a, as a, a professor in the class, and I appreciate that, and you're gonna help them do whatever they need to do. But if they don't, if they do get an eye in that developmental class, then their best scenario is to come back and get an eye and, and, and complete that, uh, and, and, and finish that incomplete this summer, and that way they, they're through with it and they can move on. And by, uh, by the way, that doesn't, that doesn't cost them anything when they get an eye. Uh, so they can just come back and do that. Uh, I'll be sending out the form to you. I see Pat Richardson sent me uh, something here. And veterans are a little bit different. If you're uh, if you're if you're in the uh, National Guard and you got called up, then it's a completely different scenario. So there's some there's some things out there that we deal with differently with them. Okay, uh, let me move on to another question. What about proctor testing? I haven't heard that much negative about proctor testing. That was another thing I was really worried about early on because I know a lot of our faculty do proctor testing, but I think the honor lock system has helped. I know we have a, uh, we have a lot of, uh, of, our, our, of our faculty have been able to get cameras for their, for their laptops, which has helped and made a difference uh, for them to be able to use uh, uh, honor lock and, and for them to be able to do some things that they couldn't do before. Uh, so I know that's working. We would rather students, if they are going to do proctor testing, to use honor lock and do it from their home. I've seen that done. I watched a video of it and it's just like being here on campus. I mean, you can see everything that they're doing and it's so it shouldn't be, I mean, it's not, it's not a problem with integrity of taking the test. So I, that's what we would prefer for them not to come on campus, but we do have a proctored uh, location on each on, on, at the Health Science Center in Terrell and then Athens campus and Palestine campus for students to come on. It's my understanding, and we're not, we're not all the way through the semester yet, but it's my understanding that we haven't had that many yet, but it, it may be coming because I know we got finals and we got tests coming up. So we'll work with our students to do proctored testing. We want that to, that's, that's sort of uh, important. Um, I have a question here about uh, asking about low attendance and challenges of being remote this semester will affect LEAPS. You know, I appreciate the fact that that was, question was put out there. You know, we're just having to overcome some things right now that we never thought we'd have to overcome. And to be quite honest with you, LEAPS is one of those things that's kind of way down the priority list. And right now, I don't, I don't think that's something that we really need to be I mean, I think when SAC, COC, and everybody else comes in to evaluate us, they're gonna understand we're in a different world right now. And so I appreciate the fact that LEAPS um, is being thought of, but right now, as far as I'm concerned, and as you as a faculty member concerned, it's a very, very low priority. It's something that we'll talk about maybe, uh, maybe during the summer or maybe next year, but right now, I'm not really concerned about that. Um, Another question was, Diane Milner said something about testing every day appointments. Nancy, your division chair with questions. I don't understand that question, but there, there, there are um, uh, 
there are, there are uh, different types of, uh, of testing that's being done. Um, I don't know if Diane's talking about testing for uh, TSI testing, which we're not doing, or other types of testing, or proctored testing, but we are doing that. Um, so anyways, that's, that's uh, let me go, go back to, uh, we mentioned, I mentioned proctored testing before, and that's being done. Uh, students and, and uh, can go on our website and they can find out where those proctor testing is, uh, locations are. And I think that probably they need to make an appointment to make that happen as well. We would like for them to make an appointment to make that happen. I know in Palestine, that's what we're doing. I'm not sure if we're doing that in Athens or not, but we would like for, for that to, 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 we'd like to know who's coming and when. Dual credit is another issue that we've been talking about. We had a meeting yesterday uh, with Kelly Townsend and our instructional uh, provost and leaders, AVPs and division chairs. And uh, we're, we're working through dual credit. We believe that it's going to, to, to work out. Uh, we believe that most of our dual credit students uh, that have converted from face-to-face -to, -face to online are making it work. Um, we, we believe those embedded instructors are making it work. Uh, they're doing a lot of Google Docs. Uh, I'm not that familiar with Google Docs, but apparently it's working very well and most of the ISDs are familiar with that and the students were familiar with it anyways. So that's something that it looks like uh, if you're teaching dual credit students, I hope that that's working out for you as well. If it's not, then you need to let us know um, that, we're, uh, that we need to do that and that we need to work with those students the best that we can. We have a lot of, we've talked about, we have a lot of high school seniors that are in our dual credit classes and they're hoping to graduate. Uh, and, and they won't have a ceremony in May probably, but they're wanting to graduate um, anyways. And so we need to work with those students the best that we possibly can. Uh, I, uh, in my roles here at the college as a vice president of instruction, uh, I had to tell parents of dual credit students on a couple of occasions that their daughter or son was not gonna graduate from high school because they failed a, a dual credit class of ours. I don't wanna do that. I wanna work with those students. If, if they're a senior in high school, and I think Kelly Townsend's getting ready to, to send out some information to the counselors and, and, and maybe to you as a professor as well, to let you know that we wanna work with those high school seniors, all of them, but especially the high school seniors to make sure that they're able to complete the work needed for them to be able to graduate. Um, we are considering uh, having a mini semester uh, after the end of our, uh, our fall, a spring semester, where we could have students re-enroll for different types of classes or, in, or maybe they could even use that mini semester to be able to complete the work that they got in an I, or maybe they could use that mini semester for um, a high school senior if they needed to complete work to be able to graduate, could come in and do that. So we are, we are going to have a mini semester we don't know how it's going to work yet. We don't know what's going to be offered yet, but we'll, we'll have that available. That will be a, probably a three-week uh, session. It will start the first week in May uh, or maybe the second week in May and end the end of May. So that's something that we feel like we would, would help our students that are not making it through the way they would like to for the, for the spring semester, and we can work with them. Probably won't be able to do it on a face-to-face -face basis. Pretty sure we won't be able to do that but we'll offer those online and, and, and uh, in, in a remote format. So dual credit uh, is one of those things that we are just gonna continue working through and working on. My understanding from Kelly Townsend is that we are enrolling uh, dual credit students already for the summer session. That's not been a problem. So we anticipate our enrollment for dual credit uh, is not gonna drop off even though those schools are closed, high schools are closed. And, I met with all the superintendents of all of our schools in our area, uh, in our service area earlier this week on Wednesday, and it's probably uh, their opinion that their schools are not gonna open at all back, no matter what the governor says. They're not gonna open back up. They're, they're concerned about the safety and their parents and their communities, and there's a, probably a pretty good chance that most of those high schools, are, our ISDs are not gonna open back up at all. So we're working with them the best that we can to make that work. It's not been easy, but it's been something that we've been flexible, they've been flexible. They have proctors at the high school and they have, um, they have uh, counselors at the high school that are trying to work with them to make things work so they can get through this. I was really worried about the uh, early college high school that we have here in, uh, in on the Athens campus. 
because most of those students are taking face-to-face -face classes and they were converted. And so we're working through with Athens with them. Also concerned about Terrell because we have a lot of students from Terrell High School that are bused out to the Terrell campus. And that's a, a problem uh, I was concerned about because they're not taking those face-to-face -face classes. Uh, I did get another uh, chat uh, information from Diane Milner. It says we sent out information uh, that they are testing every day with appointments. And uh, so that's, that's good news. Thank you, Diane. And, uh, and hopefully that will help our students get through what they need to. Mary Van Cleve asked a question about uh, students and getting their textbooks and lab materials. Uh, that's something that uh, I know Beth Ann has worked out and she's working on right now. All of those, as of right now, obviously the tech, the bookstore is closed, and she's uh, those books are being ordered through um, remote method, uh, email or whatever other method that can be done, and that she's sending all that out uh, to them uh, uh, so that they can receive their books, and uh, and so and we're paying for that as, uh, for that shipment to be done. So we'll continue doing that for the summer semester. We've done we did it for. Uh, we did, and we will uh, we'll do it until we can open up the bookstore again, which may be uh, quite a while into the future. I think that's worked out very well. It worked out very well with the second eight weeks of the summer. I mean, second eight weeks of the spring. Uh, we were able to do that. And by the way, those classes seem to be all going very well. Those were all online anyways. And so um, that's uh, something that has worked out very well. So we think we can make it, make it work the same way for our summer semester. So thank you for that question. Another student housing uh, has been so, somewhat of a, of a challenge for us. We had about 30, 30 to 35 students that could not, had no place to go. And I'll, I'll tell you, some of the other colleges actually closed their, closed their campuses and said, I'm sorry. I, I was not, we were not willing to do that. We had these students that had no place to go. They were from South America or New York City or California or Florida and or wherever, you know, and they could not leave. And so we would not do that. And so we they're still here on campus. I think, uh, you know, we're, we, we have the cafeteria open for them. We've made arrangements for the cafeteria to be open seven days a week. We have good, I think we have, we, we, we have, a, a, I've been over there every day. So I think we've got uh, pretty good meals available for them. We've got selection of box box. There's not a there's not a uh, a buffet like it was in the past. So uh, we're safe and we're keeping this six foot rule as they come in. We're keeping them safe. They're not allowed on campus anywhere else uh, except in their dorms. And of course, they're all still in classes. So they're they're taking their online classes uh, in their dorm and in uh, uh, and you know we'll see them around campus. I don't see them very often, but we'll see them around campus outdoors, uh, outside, but um, that's kind of the way it's worked. They'll be here through the uh, end of this semester. I had, had a question about will we open the dorm back up? I hope we do. Um, we're scheduled to open the dorm back up the second six weeks of the summer, uh, and, uh, and, and you know, hopefully we'll be able to, to come back as normal, but we'll just have to wait and see how that works out. Um, I've been asked about refunds. We're working on refunds now. As many of you probably have read about, the college uh, has received the CARES Act funds. Um, we received about, well, not about, we received $1,865,240 from the federal uh, DOE in, in, the, in the CARES Act fund. Basically, that fund was set up in two different grants. One grant was for the students and for us to use for students and students um, services and students financial uh, aid and students help. And so that's half of it, that's $932,620. Uh, $932, We've had a committee all week long. We basically found out about this a week ago, last Friday. And so we've had a committee working all week long about what we, how we can implement this and how we can allocate these funds. And they've come up with some good plans. Every college is doing it different. It's not that the federal government is not giving us much guidance with this. They we're just kind of making making it work based on their broad and general guidance. This has not been easy either, uh, and we're still trying to figure it out as we go along. But we're gonna we're gonna start giving we're gonna start allocating that money out hopefully 
uh, by, before the end of April to our students. And refunds, that, that will be part of that as well. Um, the other, other part of the grant that I mentioned was for the institution. And that's for us to be basically refunded for, 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 for costs that we've incurred or will incur. And one of those costs that we've incurred is our, um, is our uh, housing. And so we're going to, to uh, hopefully be able to handle all that at some point in the future. Again, it's not been, we don't have the direct guidance that we'd like to have to make decisions now. We have to wait and see what, where we're gonna be. So we're planning on making some, uh, a refund on housing as well as many other things. But right now we're just trying to make it uh, work and figure out how the CARES Act is gonna work and how it's gonna be implemented. And everybody else in the country is trying to figure it out as well. Um, but, the, but, the, uh, but the institutional grant will come later. We haven't gotten any direction on the institutional grant. And so we're hoping that we get something next week uh, I was hoping we'd get something today or this week, but it didn't happen. So I think hopefully we'll get something on that next week and we can start making some plans for that. Um, I've been asked about the, uh, the football, uh, basketball, football, band, cardiacs, volleyball, all of that. Uh, as you know, uh, we followed the guidance from the NJCAA basically, and they pretty much shut down, not pretty much, they did shut down all of athletics uh, back in, in early or mid-March. And uh, so we haven't had any. Our, we were getting ready to go to the national basketball tournament. Our women's net basketball team was rated number one in the nation. We won our, our, our regional tournament and we were getting ready to go down. And the week before we were getting ready to uh, go down, they canceled everything. So it was a, it's, a been, it's been kind of a hard thing for them because they prepared all season for that. It's been difficult for our softball team. They started working back in August. They got started with the beginning of their uh, season uh, against that we were playing Navarra and it, we were playing them on a Saturday and they canceled it the Friday before that. So our whole seasons were lost and I felt really bad for the, for the, for the coaches and for the, all the players and they put so much time and effort into it and it was basically all gone. But volleyball is the same way. They had, their season was canceled. All the recruiting was stopped. Everything stopped. So I really don't know exactly what's gonna happen with our athletic programs. Do, to be quite honest. Uh, we're we're gonna use the same guidance that NJCAA provided to us before, they'll be providing to us again. And we anticipate that to be in mid, mid, mid to early May, uh, I hope, but we'll just have to wait and see how that, that works out. I hope that we, I hope it works out that we have everything back to normal, but I think that's probably being way too optimistic. We'll just have to kind of, kind of wait and see the way things work out. Um, we will be providing scholarships because we've already committed to scholarships. We will be doing the things that we normally do. We, we just may not be able to play games and may not be able to have practices and may not be able to do the things that we normally would be doing. Which, you know, is sort of, is a very unfortunate, but again, it's the times that we live in. I'm looking for other questions. Uh, the textbook, Beth Ann posted something in our chat room about the uh, website for the textbooks. Uh, it's available. The information is available. You can order that. You can call them or you can email. Thank you, Beth Ann. Again, this hasn't been real easy for Beth Ann and, and people over in the bookstore, as well as everybody on campus, all the campuses. And, and uh, But we do with the best that we can. Uh, Kristen Bennett just posted something about our scholarships. Our scholarships, um, we extended the date for our scholarships. Initially, it was April 15th. We extended that date to June 15th. And so we're, we're still taking applications for scholarships. We're still working through that. And uh, we'll, we'll continue working through that as, as, we, as we can. And um, I just wanna mention the CARES Act. I'll go back just a little bit about that. Um, we're gonna be providing financial um, reimbursement or financial uh, funding for our students. And we realize we've got a lot of students out there that, are, that don't have jobs. That, anymore, they were laid off, that they worked at restaurants or, or, or Walmart or grocery stores and those stores are all closed and they, they don't have a job. And we realize that's difficult for them. And so we're gonna do everything we can with the CARES Act and in any other way that we possibly can to support them and help them. So there will be financial reimbursement to our students and it will be coming. It's just a matter of how we can make that work. Um, 
I'm looking for other uh, faculty. Uh, Vicki Geisel posted something about faculty evaluations. You know, I have other people have brought something up about faculty evaluations. I need to talk to our, uh, I know that something was sent out this last week, I think by uh, the, uh, the uh, Tina Rummel's office um, about faculty evaluations. You know, again, we're in a different world right now than we were in six weeks ago. And I, I just need to talk to our, uh, our um, leadership that we have and our instructional leaders, our, our division chairs, and see what their thoughts are. To be quite honest, I don't think SAC COC or anybody else is gonna, is gonna give us a, a bad mark for not doing evaluations, but we just need to figure out what we wanna do and how we wanna do it. Um, you know, Gary. again, that's sort of uh, something that's, um, uh, you know, we're just trying to make it through the semester. And I see Tina is on the line. Tina, did you wanna say something? Yes, I mean, the the semester evaluations were extended, if that's what Vicki's referring to. No. They start April 27th, I believe, and all the students have the emails. Everything's been sent out to everyone. I don't think that's what Vicki's talking about. I think she's talking about not having a, a faculty evaluations. And I've had other people do that, and I know other colleges are doing that. And again, we'll just kind of wait and see. I know that we've already got students that are probably doing evaluations, so that we'll probably do what we've got and we'll probably work through what we've got and what we're doing and, um, uh, and, and see how that works out. So, uh, you know, it's just, again, we're in a different world now. Um, I know we're, we're uh, working through different issues like that as we go along the best that we possibly can. Um, I think I'm pretty well down to the end of my questions here. Um, if you have additional questions, please keep posting them. I hope I haven't left anybody off the, uh, the chat room that I haven't answered a question for. Um, I just, again, want to express, I'm not real sure what, the, what exactly, how we're going to deal with different things in the future, but I'm very optimistic that we're going to do the best job that we possibly can do for our students and the communities that we serve. Um, I'm, again, I, and I will continue emphasizing this, so proud of you and so proud of TVCC and what we've done in the last six weeks. I never dreamed that we'd be able to, to do the things that we're doing remotely, both the instruction as well as the uh, student services and the registration that we've been able to do. And the only reason that we're doing that is because of you and because of your, your efforts and your, your ingenuity and, and the help of all these other people like Holly Collier and, and others that, and, and, and the, 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 the faculty mentors, the online mentors, and the others that have been uh, just out there helping and, and making it work for us. Um, it's going to be, it's go, there's going to be additional challenges, but again, I feel very, very good about where we are with that and that we can meet those challenges based on what we've done the last six weeks, seven weeks here at TVCC. I'll tell you that I believe that the future in terms of, um, I, I believe there's gonna probably be some, some, uh, some budget belt tightening. There's probably gonna be uh, the, the economy, as you well know, the, right now there's some predictions out there that the unemployment rate is gonna be up to 20%. It hasn't been that since the Great Depression. And if that's the case, um, the state itself is, is gonna be uh, hurting financially. They're already hurting because they're not getting sales tax revenue. They're not getting the oil and gas revenue that they depended on because of the oil and gas industry. And so there's going to be some belt tightening because there's going to have to be some, uh, some loss of revenue from the state standpoint. Also, our property taxes, um, not this year because this next year our revenue is based on what our property taxes were on December the 31st of 2019, but the future property taxes I'm guessing are probably gonna drop. They should, I hope they do, because I think our property values are gonna drop. If that happens, there's gonna be a loss of revenue from that as well. So I think it's gonna be a little, a little bit like it was back in 2008 and 2009, when we were having to deal with the, the, the great recession, except this could even be a greater impact, have a greater impact. Um, I will tell you this, that I believe our enrollment in my opinion, this is just my opinion, and I'm hearing from different presidents at other community colleges around the state, but I think our enrollment for the summer will be down.
because I think people are still going to be concerned about safety in, in the coronavirus. And, and, and I realize that we're going to be doing probably almost all online, but, um, but I think it may be down. Uh, we're going to do everything we can to advertise. I think we've got a, a Marlo Bitter has got an advertising uh, campaign uh, that she's going to be doing in the next couple of weeks about students this summer taking our online classes and students in the fall taking our online classes. You don't have to come to campus to take a class. Do it online. Do it from home. And so we're really going to be pushing that uh, in the days to come to be able to make sure that our enrollment do doesn't drop uh, too much. Again, I was telling you earlier, this is a count year for us. And uh, it started back in uh, March 1st, and it will end on February the 28th of 2021. And so we're, we're, losing, we're losing enrollment, I think, in the summer probably. We're going to probably lose some enrollment in the fall. Right now, we've already lost an eight-week cycle in our vocational program at TDCJ because of the, uh, of the fact that we've been not meeting classes for the last six weeks. Um, I think that probably uh, that's going to cost us. I think Dr. Hurley sent me an estimate about $350,000 to $400,000 in revenue. Just contact, uh, contact our funding and uh, uh, revenue from our, our uh, uh, fees that we charge those students. So that's, we've, that's already gone because we, we're, we're exp expanding it uh, and so that we, we, we're losing an eight-week cycle because uh, it's going past February the 28th of 2021. So it's going to be a challenge for us, but I think we're up to that challenge. We've been up to it before. We'll do it again. Um, we'll, we'll figure it out, and we'll make it work. I'm very optimistic. I feel very good about going forward. The college is in very good financial condition. We're much better than most other community colleges, thanks to our board of trustees and others over the years. We have, we have a substantial uh, amount in reserves, and we anticipate, uh, you know, not dipping in and not using those reserves. But we do, we do uh, feel like it's going to be some, so the next couple of years are going to be something that we'll have to be very careful with, and we'll have to watch very closely in terms of what we're doing. Uh, we've talked about doing a, uh, uh, I noticed that University of Texas uh, is, has, uh, I noticed yesterday in the, one of the art articles that I wrote, the University of Texas has a, a bank, uh, has a, a a, a, a close, they've closed all their hiring. They're not hiring anybody now. And so we're not doing that yet, but we're, we're close to doing that. Uh, each, each person that we're hiring that's retired will be closely scrutinizing whether that person needs to be replaced or not. And uh, it's, it's going to be something that we'll be evaluating as we go along. I know Dr. Reed has asked for two more faculty uh, to help with her increase in enrollment that she's going to see in in the Terrell Health Science Center, and that's obviously something we planned on for the last three years. And so but each one each one will have to be evaluated very closely. Um, I, I, can't, I can't say enough about, I know that your world has been turned upside down. Our whole, our whole world has been turned upside down at, at, the, at, at, at TVCC and higher education around the country, but you've handled it and you've done what you needed to do to make it work. And I, again, I can't say how much I appreciate that. Uncertainty, I believe, is going to live with us for a few more years. Uncertainty. We're just going to have to deal with the fact that we don't know exactly maybe uh, what's going to happen three months from now or six months from now. And we're going to have to deal with that uncertainty as we go along and make the best decisions that we possibly can. I never heard of social distancing six w before six weeks ago. I didn't know what social distancing was. Maybe some of you did. Uh, I do now. And I think we all do. I, you know, I knew a little bit about Zoom, uh, but now Zoom is becoming a regular part of our everyday lives. I'm going to usually two or three Zoom meetings a day. So, you know, our world's changed and it's going to change forever, I think. Uh, and some of it will be for the benefit. Some of it will be for good. And some of it will, will make us work uh, to make uh, that change benefit our students and benefit our communities we serve to the maximum amount. Uh, let's see, one other question. The company that remotely proctors the TSI is in India and has been closed. That was, I forgot what the Educare, I think was the name of that company, I believe, I'm not real sure. But we were hoping to be able to do TSI distance or remotely. And, and I guess maybe we're trying to figure out if we can make that work. 
you can probably read Diane's uh, comments here. It says that I've been working hard to set up a system so that we can proctor using Zoom. However, we are having students coming in to test every day and answer phone calls. So we'll be very limited proctoring the TSI ourselves and continue to do all of our duties. As far as HSE testing, we are just doing day to day on that decision. So again, we're trying to work through that as we go along, um, being very careful in terms of proctoring and what we're doing with that. Um, anybody have any other questions? You can, uh, you can open up your, uh, uh, and unmute yourself. If you have any other questions, I'd be happy to answer those right now. Am I missing anything? I did have a question about the VPI physician. Um, it wasn't on the board there, but somebody else asked it, I think, and um, we're making it work. And basically, uh, you know, we're missing Wendy and we wish she was here, but she's not, and we're making it work. The AVPs are doing much more work than they've ever done before, probably. I appreciate their involvement and their effort. The provosts are doing more. I'm doing more. I'm filling in that role, and I'll probably continue filling in that role. Uh, I'm hoping to be able to hire somebody by August 1st. Uh, for the new school year, but again, plans can change, things can change, all sorts of uh, different um, different things can happen between now and then. So, uh, you know, that's my goal. Uh, I, I I will tell you this though: everybody stepped up, and uh, and and with 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 the with the with the VPI, uh, Tammy Denny stepped up, and she's doing some things with with colleague and Lucian. By the way, we're still having to deal with colleague and Lucian. And we're still having to deal with uh, with all those other things that we were dealing with before uh, now. So, um, uh, do I, does anybody does anybody need to unmute and answer any questions? I, I have a question about checking temperature. I, I have no no way of knowing what we're going to do, when we're going to open. I will I will commit to you now that it will be a we will have a safe environment. And I don't know what that means exactly and how that will work. Uh, and I won't know for a while, but we'll work with Dr. Reed. We'll work with uh, Ruth Iverson. We'll work with everybody that we can to keep us, um, keep us safe. And uh, so whatever that takes and we'll, we'll do. Um, so I appreciate that, uh, that question. Uh, I'll, let me just close unless you, anybody wants to unmute, I'll give you a second to do that. <laughs> okay, again, I, let me just say how much I appreciate all of you. Uh, I will try to keep you informed as much as I possibly can. Uh, if we will continue uh, to post things on our college website, I'll continue sending out emails um, for future and future updates. I'll provide an update each Monday morning. Each one of you will get that Monday morning and you'll have an update on some of the things that's, that's going on on the campus as well as some of the things that happened the previous week. If you as a faculty member have a problem or concern or an issue, please don't hesitate to contact your division chair or your AVP or your provost. Or if you, and if for whatever reason you can't get in touch with them, contact me, send me an email. You know, my email is jking at tbcc.edu. And most of you know my, my cell phone number as well. And send me a text or send me an email and I'll, I'll make sure you get help if you need it or assistance if you need it. If you're a, if you're a staff member and working in an office, if, you're, you're, if you need some assistance or you need some help or, or you, need, you need to know more, get more information, then contact your supervisor and see, and I'm, all, everybody's been in this together and we've all worked very well together. And we're gonna make sure you get what you need uh, the best that we possibly can. And, um, and so do that. And if, if, if you don't get your, Whatever reason something doesn't happen quickly or it doesn't happen in a good time frame or that, then, then call, call, contact me. Call me, call my office number or call my, uh, or send me an email and I'll make sure that you get what you need. And if you're a student out there listening, contact your professor that's teaching the class. If you don't get help from your professor, contact the, um, the division chairs or the provost or contact me again, send me an email and I'll make sure that you get the information that you need. Again, thank you so much for everything. Um, 
I see that people are saying prayers are needed. Yes, prayers are needed. Believe me, uh, that's that's something that I, I appreciate because it's uh, it's not been an easy last six or seven weeks, and I don't think the next three or four weeks are probably going to get any easier. So continue praying for us. Continue being optimistic. Uh, continue doing the things that you've been doing to the best of your ability. We're going to provide you the resources that you need to get your thing to get it done. And um, everybody have a great weekend and have a great Friday. And uh, we'll get back at it again here on Monday. Thank you very much for everything you do for us. I'm going to close the meeting. All right, thank you. You're welcome.